record, but go ahead and get it popping, man. Week two, week two, the t- main topic is marketing. Uh, before we get into that, I know we kind of talked a little bit before this, just, you know, about how our week was, but just give me something you're grateful for this week or today. Great weather. Mm, amen. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> like you in Jacksonville. <laughs> um, for myself, uh, I'm grateful for information like books. Very grateful for that, man. Um, so since we got a small group, we'll kind of breeze right, right through all these points. We'll get right to the the meat and bones of what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> excuse me, which is marketing and sales. But first, I want to kind of pose it as a question. Um, what is the difference between marketing and sales? They usually use like combined marketing and sales, but what would you say like the difference between the two is, or is there a distinct difference or how do you see the two? From my perspective, sales is actually actively searching for clients with the intention of signing someone up or selling a product, depending on whether you have a service or a product versus marketing is how you're advertising yourself, how you're presenting yourself to people, how you're getting word about your business or your product or your service spread. That's just how I look at it. No, that's like really close to like the, literally the definition of it. So the (laughs) definition of marketing Uh, The activity of business, the activity or business of promoting and selling products or services, including market research and advertising, whereas sales, by definition, is the exchange of a commodity for money, the action of selling something. Um, And I had to share those definitions for a long time. For me, I didn't really know the difference. I just thought I post something on social media and somebody buys it. That's how it works, right? You just press a button and somebody buys it, right? Um, but once you get down to the science of it, you really notice that they're different, but they do kind of have this like intimate dance with one another. Uh, so I wanted to start off uh, our goal today. Well, my goal today, I didn't, I didn't share this with you. is to actually give everybody homework. All right. So like after every week, give them actionable steps that they can take. So last week, I, like I, didn't, I didn't mention it, but I want uh, I'm going to put it in the chat. Make sure everybody does like a time audit. So like just look at their week, mm-hmm. like how much time are you actually spending on income producing or productive you know, activities? That'll be last week's task. While this week, it'll be trying to figure out what our avatar is, which is the next topic we're going to dive into. Uh, so I want to use like an example. So random example random business. I don't sell these, but imagine I was selling dentures, right? So I got these fake teeth. I'm trying to push out, right? A lot Can of I people- pause you right there? Yeah. Did you choose that randomly or is that like <laughs> part yeah, of what I just, you've been? <laughs> no, I chose, I chose it randomly because it, it fit two things. It was like, it's a business I'm not currently in. And it's also um, a business where if you don't know who your avatar is, you're not going to be able to effectively market the product. Okay, that's fair. All right, keep going with yeah. your dentures. <laughs> okay, so if I have dentures, for my notes, for my notes. Okay, so if I have dentures and I'm trying to sell it and I'm posting on Facebook, Instagram, like I'm on TikTok making these cool videos about my dentures and I get a sale, I get one sale. Would that be considered effective marketing? I have a product, I'm promoting it, I got a sale. So I literally just read the chapter of the four hour work week about like marketing to your like niche communities, like not doing mass marketing if you're not finding your target audience. So absolutely not (laughs) (laughs) because you're probably marketing it to the 99% of people who have all of their teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which brings me to the, at this point, might be the second or third point, but building our avatar, which is our homework. So I wrote down just like some, some things that you have to keep into consideration that we should keep into consideration when we're making an avatar. Let's use our dentures example. First things first, they should have a name, whatever that name is going to be. We'll, we'll give this, we'll give our ideal client Todd. We'll say his name is Todd. All right. Then you got to give him an age. So our target audience 
Uh, they range between like 60 and 75. Um, but for simplicity, let's just pick one name, one age, 65. They retired, you know, after 65, they retired. So we're looking at Todd, who's 65. Where does Todd live? Might not be a big, you know, might not be a big factor in how we're marketing, but it definitely plays a part, right? Well, actually, it does play a part with this demographic as we as we'll get to later. Location. Let's just say Todd's in Jacksonville because that's our target market, right? We're selling dentures in Jacksonville <laughs> because in Florida, that's where people are retiring, right? That's probably where Old we should- Old people, push. yes. Snowbirds. That's where, <laughs> <laughs> where we should push our product. All right, so we got the name, we got the age, we got the location. Now we got to talk about psychographics. Like what are the things that a 65-year-old Todd who is retired, what are the things that he's doing? How is he spending most of his time? What are the things that he's buying? If he's um, in Florida, he's golfing. He's golfing. Very important to know. Very important to know. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to add that as a note so I don't forget it. Bring it back up. Um, so we got the name, the age, the location, demographics, or uh, psychographics. You know, how are they thinking? What are they buying? Their income level. That plays a part in it, right? Uh, if we're selling dentures, high-end dentures, right? We want somebody who has a nice little nest egg. Maybe they've been retiring. They got some money. Maybe they came from a certain industry, Right. Kind of need to piggyback off of that. The size of the family, right? Is this is Todd single? Is he is he widowed? Is he is he divorced? Is he married? That plays a factor as well. And I'm saying all that, or mentioning all that to say, once we have an avatar, and then you can begin to market to that avatar. Um, one of the things that I struggled with, I'm still making a progress on is creating content specifically for your avatar. A lot of times, I'm just going to use I. I make content to get a like or a comment, but it's not necessarily content targeted towards a specific mm -hmm. avatar. So circling back to the jump, and you can share this if you don't mind, or it's it's up to you. But what would you say like your avatar is in your business? Like if you just had to brainstorm just off the top, it doesn't got to be anything solid or concrete. But like what's your avatar for your for your market? I mean, I'd start with athletes. Athletes. Or a coach. Cause I, I guess really actually it's probably it's probably the coach because the athlete isn't the person who's gonna bring me on as a client. The right. athlete is my target audience, but the coach is who I would need to make the sell to. So we're gonna say so we're going with a coach. Yes. Okay, dope. How old how old is this coach or how long has he been coaching? Or both, both of those questions. So if I have three different markets, do I need three different avatars? Uh, are they three different uh, products? It's the same product, but your coach that is coaching youth is going to have different, like typically different ages, different experience than somebody who's coaching college or pros. Mm. So that's why I'm saying like, cause that, that does change like how I market to that person. Absolutely. Because I'm not going to market to a college or professional coach, especially a like a high level college coach or professional coach the same way I would market to somebody, some, you know, 25 year old who's coaching youth. Yeah, absolutely. Basketball. Absolutely. So then it would uh, I guess we'd have to niche down and we have to <laughs> figure out exactly like your perfect client. Like if you had a client or a customer that will book you every spring, summer and fall and you knew that they were going to book you. And you like working with this specific type of team or player or coach, like what's your like ideal avatar, like your, your dream client? I mean, I, well, my dream client and my ideal client are two different things. Cause my dream client would be that professional level because it's a, it's a different, it's a different financially it's it's significantly different and it's also different in the way that you get to work with adults versus kids but if we're talking ideal i'd have to say youth because they have fewer resources and so they would jump on the chance for somebody else 
to do something that they either don't have the time to do or don't know how to do because they're pretty new to coaching or even if they've been coaching for a while, again, you have limited resources at your disposal and not a ton of money to work with. So Mm. that's a good point. Um, And I'm happy you actually brought that up, like our dream client versus our actual client, because we can have excuse. I'm not an artist, but uh, (laughs) as you can tell, straight lines are my thing. But um, it's good to know what your dream client is. And I'm more, again, talking to myself. (laughs) It's important to know what the dream client is, because if you know what what who you want to work with, Mm -hmm. you might not be able to get that client now. But But it determines how you build. Exactly. Exactly. So with that example, let's just take our our actual client so that youth are we you want to go with that youth coach or that the the person that's working with the youth. Yeah. I mean, like I said, ideal, that's that's the that's the best place to get in and really impact and build the audience. Okay, dope. So how old is this coach? She's what, like 25, you said? I think you had I mean, let's say most youth coaches are somewhere, you know, 20 to 30. Okay, we'll just we'll just give it halfway. Give him give him twenty five, fresh out of college. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. It's okay. Where is he located? Where's your ideal client located? What area would you like to be working and operating out of currently? Definitely locally, because that's less money I'm putting out of pocket for travel for a youth coach that can't afford to pay for my travel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, cool. And then, what is this typical coach's? Like their psychographics, what are the things that they're buying? What are they researching? Where where do they shop? Where do they get their groceries? Where do they get their clothes? You don't have to get into that detail, but I'm just <laughs> again, just throwing out just different things to consider. <clears throat> I mean, let's see if we're <laughs> if we're sticking to basketball here, they're probably buying Jordans. <laughs> I buy shoes. They're definitely buying sneakers. <laughs> right, definitely buying some shoes. They're they're shopping in sports related stores. If we're talking local, they're probably getting their groceries at Publix, maybe Winn Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on you know what sales they have right. or what's next to them. <laughs> but are like researching a lot. I mean, a lot of these coaches are researching other teams and plays and things like that. Um, where do they spend most of their time? You would say, if we're talking 25, gym. probably the gym, they're at the gym, heavy gym goer, probably heavy, uh, heavy Instagrammer. Yes, definitely <laughs> social media, heavy on the socials. So we know that that's a big, you know, that's a big factor. Obviously we want to maybe, I like that. I think we got a, we got a decent amount to know what our avatar is. I was going to draw one. Draw a little stick figure, but I'll save us all the, the torture of that. I don't know, that might be the most entertaining part of this. <laughs> um, you kind of mentioned their income level. So we'll probably say somewhere around the poverty line, like, you know, poverty, to, uh, poverty, poverty line is like 20K to, I believe it's 20K. Don't quote me on that. Between like 20K and like 25. I actually think it's less than that. I really don't ask me why I know that. Yeah. The poverty line is a lot lower than it should be, which is kind of crazy. I feel like it hasn't caught it hasn't kept up with the cost of living. It's it's insanely low if you're talking about one income person. Mm. I want to say it's closer to twelve or fifteen thousand, but oh, let's say yeah. this is most youth coaches are probably those guys who have multiple jobs these days. That's a gig, it's a gig economy. This is good. This is good. This is good. We got one more family size. They're probably single. Maybe that dating. age, like that age, most likely maybe dating. But I don't. if we're talking 25, not many of them are married with kids yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to. At least he's smiling. Oh, no. I was going to say, no, he's uh, not. <laughs> he has a list he has a list it's fine it's fine okay so you, that would be the best part of this <laughs> <laughs> so we got two two businesses two ideal clients so we have ap's business uh where she's looking for a coach somewhere around the age of 25 in jacksonville they like sports stuff they're heavy on the gym 
They're usually researching drills. They're heavy on the social media. They probably got multiple jobs, multiple gigs. Uh, they're probably single. We got that avatar for um, for her business. And then we have my denture business where we're, we're aiming for Todd, who's 65, living in, in Florida. I should narrow that down a little bit. He's living in a let me actually write, write these down so everybody can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is Todd. Todd. He's 65. He's in, we'll say he's in the same target market. We'll say he's in Jacksonville. And uh, they're probably watching midday TV. They're definitely reading the newspaper. They're probably going on walks. Probably definitely. going golfing. I think you said that. Definitely golfing. Definitely golfing. Drinking at the beach. Mm. I'm trying to think of what all of the people in Naples were doing. <laughs> I would visit my grandmother. <laughs> Shout out to her. Amen. Um, their job, definitely retired. Or maybe working at local grocery stores yeah, a little part-time stuff yeah part-time gigs and it might seem like the people the not not you but they're playing bridge bridge is that part <laughs> yes never played that neither have i but that was huge with my grandpa well my grandfather mostly but mm. their circle of friends wish i could make it bigger it's definitely not big enough so for those who are who aren't live on the call again the reason why we're doing this and we're taking this time and that took us a matter of about 10 minutes to figure out our target audience you know our, our avatar and again the reason why that's important i'm going to close this for a second <laughs> save us <laughs> save us the uh yikes but anywho the reason why that's important is because if we don't know who our avatar is, how do we market to them? How do we create the hooks and the sales copy and whatever needs to go in the description to attract that ideal client? Like, for example, we uh, marketing. What are the different, we'll kind of circle back down, let me create a new whiteboard. All right, so when we're talking about marketing, what are the different ways we can market? Like, what are the different avenues, avenues of marketing? meaning there are a million a bunch right like yeah. uh, b2b marketing business to business you got word of mouth which is the best because it's free and people definitely are more likely to buy your product or your service if they know somebody else that liked it ding 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 we got a uh, social media social and you know that's obviously uh you got subsections because each social media has like a different oh, yeah. different demographic. Oh yeah. Right. Different forms of content. You got web websites, websites as blogs. Pay per click stuff on Google. Mm. That's been uh newspaper daytime tv i only thought of that because my 65 year old client he's definitely watching like young and the restless in the middle <laughs> of the day or something todd is chilling daytime tv uh and the list goes on i mean we can we can be creative in our avenues of marketing but again if we don't know who our, our avatar is it doesn't matter where we're marketing because our target audience isn't going to see it so with our target with our uh let me go back to this uh to this beautiful uh, <laughs> of art here. So for AP's ideal client, what, where, where should we be marketing? Where are avenues of marketing? Definitely social media. Like for, for me, for that particular client, definitely going heavy on social media and personal network word of mouth. Cause those mm -hmm. are going to be my biggest impacts with somebody in that universe. And now you can sleep peacefully knowing that you ain't got to run no newspaper ads. No money needed. Ads, <laughs> no money needed. I love that. And then Todd, my guy Todd, he's making it tough for me because I got to 
<laughs> now I gotta I gotta put newspaper ads out there. I gotta go maybe put business cards at local shops. Flyers in their condo community, like the little bulletin boards in the common areas. Are you having fun with Todd over there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thinking about Todd, man. How am I going how am I going to get how am I going to get, you know, outside of word of mouth in newspapers? I'm just really hoping you don't actually have 65-year-olds watching this YouTube video later cuz they're going to be uh, really mad at you cuz I feel like they actually have their teeth. <laughs> they probably have social. <laughs> they're probably posting consistently and everything. <laughs> But we're going to pretend that this guy did not brush his teeth as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if you're 65 and older. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. But yeah. So again, so again, this little exercise was just to have us thinking, okay, uh, or have us understanding that if we don't have an ideal client, it's hard to market to that ideal client. If I don't know what avenue I'm going to be marketing to, it's going to be hard to plan content to attract that ideal client. So now I want to kind of dive into, I guess, part of the homework, and I'll review it at the end, is going to be one, finding out who your avatar is. Two, finding out which marketing route, which marketing avenue you're going to you're going to continue with. And the third one is more of like a tracking metric just to see where your clients are coming from. Um, I hired a business coach last year and she was like, you're doing a lot of posting on social media. How many clients are you actually getting from social media? I was like, uh, like, I think like this last month, I've maybe gotten like one or two. She's like, okay, <laughs> where are you getting most of your clients from? Usually word of mouth. Like somebody tells somebody, she's like, you spending an hour, two hours a day on social media. You're wasting your time. Like you need to know where your clients are coming from. But anywho that same chapter I lit I literally just read in the four hour work week it talks about all of that mm, I'm gonna have to read that one again I read that one a long time ago so I don't <laughs> recall a lot of stuff that's in that that one's fresh that this is it's one of my books that I'm picking out pieces but considering I can't exactly replicate be a I can't be a consultant and not actually be involved in my business right yeah <laughs> so I'm pulling out the concepts that actually work for me but that one is like literally everything you're talking about is the chapter I just read oh dope that's perfect that's perfect do you have any um any I don't know because I was doing a lot of talking so please if you at any point if you have anything to add or or take out you you please let me know um, no, I mean I think you're like you're definitely hitting it because it is it is knowing how to get your business and things like that and where people are going to take you seriously. Mm. I was talking to somebody else about this recently with their business and like going back to the word of mouth thing. I remember as a kid, one of my aunts told, I don't know if she told multiple or I don't know why she was, we were talking about this, but she had always said, never hire a lawyer who advertises because that lawyers that are advertising are searching for clients and now that I'm working in a law firm I see that because I, I'd never heard of our law firm before I worked there when I met the lady who ended up hiring me I had to google them to figure out who they were and it turns out they're the oldest law firm in the state of Florida some of the best criminal and civil lawyers in the state and in I mean they're not they have a national reputation and I'd never heard of them, but most of our clients, when I'm sitting at the front desk for the receptionist, when people are calling, looking for a lawyer, how did you hear of us? Oh, so-and-so referred you. So, yeah, I heard about you from this person. And so, and some of them, it is Google, but we're bringing in so much money, but not spending a dime on putting it out there because in certain, now, advertising is necessary in certain markets but when you know exactly like who your client base is and I mean think about it if you're charged with a serious criminal charge do you want the guy who's posting billboards all over town desperate for clients or do you want the guy who keeps his head down and does his job and is insanely effective and so from that perspective like seeing it firsthand it makes sense and so it's mm -hmm. it's that that knowing where you're trying to get your clients from and where they're actually going come from that really makes a difference when and can save a ton of money 
and yeah. time in your case. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And then even like to even get like a deeper dive too. it's like it's like if you are running ads or you are running social, not not like we're demonizing it or saying it's bad, but it's like if you are on those 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 marketing avenues, again, you have to talk to your ideal client. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of times we think again, can't say we a lot of times I think, OK, a like or a comment I said at the beginning reflects a sale. Mm -hmm. It doesn't reflect a sale. No. It doesn't even reflect somebody's interested in your no. product at all you know so i think i think that's a, a common misconception and maybe something that as entrepreneurs we should like rewire our brain because we get programmed that we see a like or a comment and it's it's good which it can be but that doesn't mean that we're closer to selling or, yeah. or we're closer to attracting our ideal client um good talk good talk um next week i wanted to get i know i know we're we still got a little bit of time 15 20 minutes uh but next week we'll dive deeper into sales, uh, the actually the art of sailing. So I wanted to hopefully give people time to do their homework where their where their leads are coming from. But I really want to um, dive more into like, you know, how are you closing your clients? You know, uh, handling objections, upsells, downsells, making it easy for somebody to actually pay you, right? They don't have to jump through hoops. You got Venmo, you got Cash App, right? all that all those different things so trying to make it easy for people to pay us um but do you have any any last things we'll keep it short and sweet since it's just us two and we went through <laughs> most of the main points of the marketing no i think you did a great job covering the basis for this one um just as a recap for everybody click these whiteboards again to say you just want everybody to see your art <laughs> before we close out oh, your your Lord. new future career abstract artist <laughs> <laughs> yo anything is art so <laughs> you're not you're not too far off there i might be i might have to change change careers when we see you in a gallery one day we will know it started here on zoom <laughs> <laughs> so recap from week one Week one homework is time audit, track time spent on income producing tasks. Then week two, what's your avatar? No drawing required. Right. And still having trouble. <laughs> this is English, right? What's your what's your avatar? And we're also asking what marketing avenues are you using to attract your avatar? Next question. Which marketing avenue is bringing you the most sales? All right, dope. Uh, anything else that you feel like we need to add to this that we can help people get the most out of? creating a marketing plan i didn't really I, we'll save social media for another day because that's a whole you gotta go that's a, that's a that's a zoom in itself yeah <laughs> honestly that's i mean all of the people who have been like shout out to janet and Aaliyah who have been giving ideas for future zooms i mean janet's right like the ideas are literally endless which is great because we have 52 weeks in a year and can keep on rolling with this forever at this rate yeah and then even like just a, I mean I sent it to you in a text but like doing these calls even like as like a as like a moderator is like really help helping me apply the knowledge that I'm learning like last week when I did my time audit I was like yo <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> like like not that I was wasting a lot of time, but I'm like, yo, I could be more efficient by just simply scheduling yeah. my day. Like just simply 
having a priority set at the beginning of the day. I would save so much time. Be intentional. Mm -hmm. It it definitely it's forcing you to research and like as you're doing it, think about yourself at the same time. Yeah. No, I mean they've been super helpful just like chatting with you for the past few weeks. It's like it's it's a different different thought level and different motivation level for sure. Yeah. We'll keep grinding and growing. We'll 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 have your dream client in no time. <laughs> <laughs> um until we meet again until next week i'll see you next tuesday 9 15 i'll be here <laughs> <laughs>